Greetings, everyone. It's so good to see you all. Thank you for joining, joining us here at Berea Church for our Bible study. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Give the Lord a hand and praise. So we do honor our pastor, Pastor John Lee, all the ministers here. Amen. You know who you are. So at this time, I'm going to call for co-pastor, Lady Lynetta Lee. Give her a hearty amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for Bishop Abram. Thank God for our pastor and his absence, Pastor John Lee. And thank God for each and every one of you. So grateful to have you. Amen. 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 It's a blessing to be here. And uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. So I want to get started right away. I'm going to be reading over in Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, we're going to start with verse 11 through 14. And I am reading out of the NIV, the New International Version. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Mm -hmm. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. So I want to talk to everyone tonight about who am I? And who are you as people of God? What is your identity as people of God? So I want to give you just a little bit of background about chapter 3, which is Exodus chapter 3. Just a little bit before that, if you all remember, and some I'm sure do, it was talking about Moses and the burning bush. So Moses had kept the flock of Jethro, which was his father-in-law, he led the flock on the backside of the desert, and he came around a mountain of God. An angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. So I want you just to visualize that. You're walking around a mountain, and you see a bush that's on fire. But the bush is not being consumed. It's not disintegrating. It's not falling into ashes, but it's just on fire. So wouldn't you think that the whole premise of that is to probably get your attention? If it's not burning up and you're not calling the fire department to put it out, but everything is staying intact. So this is what Moses experienced. It was a big, pretty big deal. So as Moses is looking at the bush, God called out to him out of the midst of the bush and said to Moses, Moses, Moses. So he called his name twice because he wanted to get his attention. So he's saying to Moses in so many words, what comes after your name, I need you to pay attention to. Man. So have you ever had a parent or some type of authority figure to call your name? Brenda, Brenda, that means they want your attention. Mm -hmm. So whatever I say next is going to be important. I need you to pay attention. So that's what God was doing with Moses. He wanted his attention. When the Lord saw that he turned aside and looked, God didn't speak to Moses until he had Moses' attention. Mm -hmm. Think about that. So when you're calling, even when you're having a situation and you call on the name of the Lord, oh God, mm -hmm. God help me, mm -hmm. you want his attention, right? Yeah. You want him to say or listen or, or respond 
to you in a way so that you are able to deliver a word or listen or if something is going on after that name is called, right? Yeah. So he wanted the attention. He wanted Moses' attention. Often God's word doesn't touch our hearts the way that it might because we don't give it attention. So God is trying to get our attention. But sometimes we don't give it the attention that it needs because we're not focused. We're not doing what we should be doing. But he's calling our name. But are you responding? Are you listening? The burning bush was a spectacular phenomenon that captured Moses' attention. But it changed nothing until Moses received the word of God that came to him. Again, him calling his name twice was God's first words to Moses calling him. By name. This shows that even though Moses was now an obscure, forgotten shepherd on the backside of a desert, God knew who he was. Moses was important to God, just yeah. like each and every one of you. He Amen. knows you Amen. by name. Amen. He knows the hairs, how many hairs yeah. are on your head. Isn't that a beautiful thing? That God knows my name, yes. and he'll call me by name, Lynetta, Diana, Zoe, Andrew, Brenda, Bessie, Joy, Renzi, Darnetta. Amen? That's what kind of God that he loves us just that much. He gave He gave his life for us. Amen? Amen. I remember uh, we were at a service. I think my father might have been there. And there was a prophet there. And he, he said, there's a lady here tonight. He didn't know me. I didn't know him. And he began to spell my name. L-Y-L-Y-N-N-L-Y-N-N-E-T-T-A. Now, y'all, I changed my name at one point. It used to be L-I. He spelled it just as I had changed it. Called me out. And I said, even God can speak through his prophets to send you a word. So always remember that. You're important enough. You're loved enough. Amen? So Moses answered him after God said, Moses, Moses. And he did that in, in the word of God many times. Do you remember he called Abraham, Abraham? There are different times in the Bible, Simon, Simon, where God has called out his people to get their attention. So Moses said, here I am. God said, take off your shoes. And why did he tell him to take them off? Because he was standing where? On holy ground. On holy ground. So he told him to take them off. So remember that when you are in the presence of the Lord, you have to come with a, a certain way, a uh, certain posture. Um, and so when he, he took his shoes off, that showed humility, yeah. right? It said even the poorest and most needy have no shoes. And servants usually went barefoot. Um it also recognized the immediate presence of God. In many cultures, you take off your shoes when you come in someone's house. And now Moses was in God's house, a place of his immediate presence. Now we, when we get new carpet or get our carpet clean, we want you to take our, your shoes off, right? Mm -hmm. But think about when you're in the presence of God, what he wants you to do, how he wants you to act. Mm -hmm. So this was just a place of being humble when you're taking your shoes off. Yeah. And when you, when you uh, think about that, you're, you're reverencing the Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. So God continued to speak to Moses, and he said, I am the father. I am the God of thy father, mm -hmm. the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face. For he was afraid to look upon God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is revealing himself to Moses by declaring his relationship to the patriarchs. This reminded Moses that God is the God of a covenant. Amen? And that his covenant with Israel was still valid and important. This wasn't a new God meeting Moses, but the same God that dealt with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses, 
hid his face and was afraid. Um, God told Moses to do what was appropriate for a creature before their creator. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And so he wanted him to recognize his holiness. Yes. Moses responded as a man who knew he was not only a creature, but also a sinful creature. He hid his face. You know, Moses had done some things. He, he had murdered. And, and sometimes when you're called before the presence of God, have you ever done something and you've just been a little ashamed? Lord, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I've come before you. I've bowed down. And, and because our God is such a forgiving God, but we still have some things in our heart that we know that we need to get rid of. But that's what can happen in the presence of God. So he hid his face. He told Moses, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. They were in slavery mm -hmm. in Egypt. So those taskmasters, I'm sure, were hard on them. Usually when you've seen things, whether it's represented through a movie or whether you've heard some of your forefathers talk about slavery, some of them might have been nice to them, but a lot of them were taskmasters, and they, they beat them, and they were hard on them, and they told them to do stuff, and get over here and sit down. And so think about that. But the Lord was saying, I've seen the affliction of the people. I've seen what you went through. I've seen what you've gone through. Yeah. And so he, he knew their sorrows. Amen. He said, I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of a land unto a good land flowing with what? Milk and honey. Milk and honey. Can you imagine a land of milk and honey? It's sweet. Amen. Amen. It's, it's something that, you know, milk usually nourishes and it strengthens us, you know. So those things, there's a little bit of something that you need and something that maybe you, look, you like. But uh, it, it flowed with it. So it just wasn't a little bit, but can you imagine something that's flowing and kind of never ending, if you will? He said, unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Pesachites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. There was a cry from the children of Israel and God seen the oppression. God said, I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou art, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt. Moses said, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? He felt inadequate. So have you ever felt like, I'm not, I don't know that I can do this. Maybe your boss or a friend or a family member asks you to do something. Will you get up and will you present before 5,000 people? Can you do this? Will you do this for me? Will you speak to them? Mm -hmm. How would you feel? So Moses felt inadequate. He felt like, well, I don't talk well. You know, I'm not eloquent in speech. I'm not adequate. I don't have what it takes to do the job. So in a sense, Moses was making some excuses. He said, oh, Lord, my God, I'm not eloquent, neither herefore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow for speech and uh, slow for my tongue. Um, and so have you ever said to somebody when they ask you, Ooh, I'm not good with that. Mm -mm, don't call on me. Mm -hmm. I, I can pray, but I can't read the scripture. I can read the scripture, but I can't pray. I can, I can preach, but I can't do the benediction. I'm being a little facetious there, but it's a lot of what we don't want to do instead of just being willing to say, sure, whatever it is that you need, I'll do it. Lord, whatever, wherever it is, I'll go. Being willing, right? Mm -hmm. And so, even though he felt like he had stammering lips and he wasn't really, uh, he felt up for the job, he still went, didn't he? Mm -hmm. God said, I will be with you. And when you brought the children out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. Moses said, God, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall and shall see them, the God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say? So in this whole text, God is saying to him, tell them I am that I am, has sent me. 
And so I want to talk to you, that was just a little background about chapter three, but I want to tell you about identity and what that means. So we all know, I believe all of us in here are old enough to know there's ID, whether you have your ID badge at work or your license, um, maybe ID um, in different forms, whether it's a credit card or some other type of form to get into where you need to get into. We all have access to different things. Even on my job, I have uh, access and all I have to do is put my badge somewhere and it unlocks the door to let me in. And that's what kind of thing that we have to think about. Knowing our Savior gives us access to the kingdom of God. Yes. And I'm so thankful that just to know him, mm -hmm. to accept him as our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. we have access to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes people identify you as your, uh, you know, because of, Maybe they knew your parents, or oh yeah, she looks like you got high cheekbones, or you look like such and so, or you walk like them. Uh, maybe a nickname and, and different things like that. My father always tells a funny story about some of the nicknames they got, gave him that evolved into a whole bunch of different things like moldy bread and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> Or bread, sorry, bread, I put moldy on there. And, and so different things, but I'm here to tell you that people like to steal your identity because you've taken care of what you need to take care of, but other people have not done so well. So they're willing, they've made a catastrophe of theirs and willing to mess yours up too and charge your credit cards up and do all kinds of things that are totally inappropriate. But we're talking about the Lord tonight. Who am I? I am that I am. So who is I am that I am? I passed out some papers to you here in just a little bit. We'll go over those. Those are I am confessions. But let's talk about the Lord right now. He is God. He is creator. He is hope. He is our savior. Jehovah Jireh, which is our provider. He is peace. Jehovah Shaddai. God, who's more than enough. He's almighty. He's a God that nourishes, supplies, and satisfies. He's the Rose of Sharon, which translates to a flower in the field. Have you ever been driving or you know, maybe you were a passenger and you were looking out the window as you're on the highway or just going down a country road and seeing the flowers of the field. He's the rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. He's our soon coming king. Wonderful counselor. Righteous governor. Prince of peace. He's your mother. He's your father. Sister, brother. Whatever you need. He's there. He is that. Who are you? So you can look at the I am's at this point, and some of them may go in order, some of them may not. But I am a child of God. So when the enemy is trying to fight your mind, and even if you feel like you're having a good day and he's not on your back, read these, recite these, remember these, quote these. I am a child of God. I am forgiven. I am a new creature. I'm saved by grace through faith. I am justified. We learned here at Berea, justified is just as I've never sinned. I'm sanctified. I'm set apart. Hallelujah. I'm a partaker of his divine nature. Delivered from the powers of darkness. Led by the spirit of God. Redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Healed by his stripes. We can call on the name of Jesus when we're feeling bad, when we're sick. And he'll heal you. Redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Yes. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. Observing and doing the Lord's commandments. Kept in the safety wherever I go. Mm -hmm. Have you ever went to a place, maybe you were in the ways of the Lord, maybe you weren't. But you knew that you were in a place that wasn't so safe, but God kept you. Mm -hmm. He just kept you. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to do it. But he did. He kept you. Yes, Lord. Have you ever, I thought about when I was reading this, even 
uh, the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in a fiery furnace but didn't get burned. God can keep you in a situation when you should have been burned, Jesus. when you should have been scarred, mm. but you come out. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Thank Lord. you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. He can bring you out. Hallelujah. Untouched. Glory. Yes. Getting all my needs met by Jesus. Casting all my cares upon him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we are strong in the Lord and the power yes. of his might. Yes. Doing all things through Christ who strengthens me. We're inheritors of eternal life. Blessed with all spiritual blessings. Exercising my authority over the enemy. Above only and not beneath. More than a conqueror. Establishing God's word here on earth. An overcomer by the blood of the lamb. And the word of my testimony. So we have to testify. We have to testify of his goodness, how God brought us out, how he delivered us, how he set us free. Yes. An overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. Daily overcoming the devil, not moved by what I see. We have to have faith in God and trust in him. Sometimes we can see things and get discouraged, but God is in control. Yes. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Walking by faith and not by sight. So I want to encourage everybody that if, if, you, if you don't know the Lord, even when you do know the Lord, always acknowledge him in all of your ways and make him your personal savior. Yes. Uh, don't allow the Satan to trick you and have you depressed and down and out and you know downtrodden. But be victorious and take your authority. Another thing, when the, what the enemy tries to do is to discourage and have thoughts, your head filled with the different thoughts that are not of God. Yeah. So make sure you cast down those vain imaginations, things of what ifs and could haves and should haves and I, I don't know about and I'm scared and what if they fire me. Sometimes, you know, you listen to people and I'll be thinking, what in the world is going on? The devil. The devil. Mm -hmm. I mean, have people really bound in the mind, you know, that's always negative, and you try to still give them something positive and negative, and you're still trying to feed them something encouraging, and they're just, and sometimes you have to just pray and leave them in the hands of the Lord. You yes. just have to do that. But because we're supposed to bring every thought into captivity. So when it gets negative, talk to the devil. I'm a child of the king. Amen. What, what's the first thing on your confession say? I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Child of yes. God. Romans 8 and 16. That's what you have to tell the devil. I am a child, child of God. Of God. Yeah. I, I will I not be discouraged. I pull down every vain imagination, every yes. thought that is Thank not you, of God, Jesus. and plead the blood every day. Mm. Yeah. Right? Bring it into captivity and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. When we go into worship, worship is a relationship with God. So this is all about relationship and knowing who God is. So know who you are. Uh, I remember Bishop Abram at one point telling us, you know, put your name in there. Put your name in those scriptures. I am Lynetta. I'm yes. a child of God. Thank you, Lord. Put those in there. Don't make excuses. So when the Lord tells you to do something, do it. Mm, when thank you, you're Jesus. asked to do it, do it. Be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah in the power of his might. Thank you, Lord. There's another scripture over in Psalms uh, 61, 1 through 3 that says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto yes, my prayer. Thank From you, the Lord. end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou art, thou, for thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. Amen? Do you believe that? He's a strong tower. That's who he is. We're talking about who am I? Who is he? And that's what he is. He's a strong tower. Amen? Over in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. 
Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye know not of it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Do not remember the former things. As Isaiah wrote prophetically to Israel, they were mired in the desperate circumstances of captivity and exile. They were locked up. They were chained. They were in slavery, right? God wanted to put their eyes on the new work he would do. So he began with a reminder, do not remember the former things. Mm -hmm. If they were stuck in the failure and sin and discouragement of the past, they would never go forward in the new thing God had for them. Think about that. When you're stuck in the past, sometimes you can't even see sometimes the blessings that are coming your way. Amen. So God is saying, don't look behind, but look forward. I remember a message that was preached here several years ago. How can you move forward when you're looking in the rearview mirror? It was something to that um, nature. But just think about looking forward. They would never go forward to a new thing that God had for them. It's fascinating and instructive. Switch between Isaiah 43, 16 and 17 and Isaiah 43 and 18. And Isaiah 43, 16 and 17, Israel was told to look at the past by remembering the things that God had did for them when he opened the Red Sea, right? But Isaiah 43 and 18, they're told, do not remember the form of things nor consider the things of old. This shows us that there is a sense in which we must remember the past. So he's given you a good example of when you should look back and remember what God has done for you and when you should, should be looking forward and not remembering the past. There's also a sense in which we must forsake and forget the past with all its discouragement and defeat and move on to what God has for us in the future. Behold, I will do a new thing, staying stuck in the past can keep us from the new thing God wants us wants to do for us. Yeah. If Israel stayed stuck in the discouragement and seduction of Babylon, they would never look for a new thing of release from exile. We can make an idol out of new. We can err as the people of Athens did when they sent, or excuse me, when they spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing over in Acts 17 and 21. We can be tossed around with every wind or doctrine. Sometimes people can be in your head and telling you stuff, and you can be tossed to and fro, but you must listen to the voice of the Lord, amen, and the balance, and work against the new thing God wants to do for you. Shall you not know? God asked the same question today. Will you stay in step with my spirit? When he leads into something new, shall you not know it? When he talks about making a road in the wilderness, think about how that would be. A lot of times when people are in the wilderness, they're just all over the place because there's no road, there's no way. But that's what God does. He'll make a way even in the wilderness. He'll make rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Usually in the desert, there's no water. There's no water. I mean, people die in the desert because it's a lot of hot, dry sand. But God will deliver. And he protects his people from, from various things, animals and various things. God makes a promise. We worry about the details of obstacles and different things, but don't worry about any of that. He'll make a way even in the wilderness. Amen? Amen. So I'm here to encourage you that know who you are in God, but most importantly, know who he is. So when you are going through and even during your daily time with the Lord, Look at your confessions and read those and read them with authority and with power. Because yes. that's what God is about, his living word and, and 
he'll come through. He'll see you through. He'll take you through. Amen? Amen. So at this time, I'm going to call on Bishop Abram. If he would come and just close us out. And uh, we just thank the Lord for the word. We thank God for the Even when you're going through, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Amen? Amen. 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 Give her a hand and pray. <laughs> who are you? Do you know who you are? You know what? You are who the Lord said you are. I know that's right. Amen. 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 Thing to speak, speak or line up with his word. Right. What his word says, that's who you are. Amen. People may call you another name <laughs> or get you mixed up with somebody that's true. Mm -hmm. that you're not. But I'm reminded of the man who was born blind. <laughs> and uh, he told them uh, what Jesus had done. And of course, the Pharisees, Sadducees, they didn't believe on Jesus anyhow. Right. And so anyhow, the man knew who he was. Even the parents knew. That's our son. But how he's seeing, we don't know. Ask him. He's of age. <laughs> anyhow, I won't go into that. That's a different message. But I will say this in connection with the message. The fiery bush, the bush that was burned but not consumed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Back in the early times of the Pentecost, the Pentecostal movement, in about 1907, 1906, Parham and the early trailblazers, they say the building they were in was on fire. They called the fire department. But it wasn't that kind of fire. It was the fire of God. Thank you, Lord. In other words, there was fire on top of the building, but it wasn't burning up. So that reminds me of Moses and what she told me. <laughs> so, God is good. Don't you love him? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank God for all of you. Amen. Now, just before I close you out, I want to say this. In church history, there was an Episcopal church. It was ruled by the bishops. And the group got tired of them and pulled out and they called themselves the Presbyterian Church. It's ruled by elders. And a lot of the Presbyterian churches have women in them. And I see you females in ministry. So I, I just want to encourage you all. Go forward in the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for the word that we've heard. We thank you for the woman of God who has brought the word and the others who so faithfully shared. We thank you for our pastor. And uh, even though he's not here, amen, you're with him. Amen. As he labors, a working man, a man of God who loves you and your people. Hallelujah. We thank you. We glorify your name. Now we pray for everyone who's able to hear this Bible study that the word will sink in their hearts. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And there's another scripture that says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my pathway. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. As we go from this place, but not your presence, be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name I pray. And let us all say, Amen. Amen.